problems posed by vibration friction from process uh, E in a dashboard with a mass M. The problem gives us the data for the mass, the stiffness of the spring, and the coefficient of the damping coefficient. Notice that the stiffness is in expressing centimeters as well as the damping coefficient. So we need to convert this to meters in order to work the problem. So now K will be 3,500 in damping coefficient will be 12.43. Now, the problem is asking us to find the damping ratio. The logarithmic decrement, which is given by this formula, is 2 pi damping ratio over square root of 1 minus damping ratio squared, which at the same time is equal to the natural logarithm of x1 over x2. And also, the problem is asking us to find the ratio of amplitudes x1 over x2, which we can find from this equation. Now, let's start by do, uh, drawing a free body diagram of the system. And we notice that the mass, the forces acting on the mass is the force of the spring and the force of the damper. Notice that I did not include it the weight because in static equilibrium, those forces are counterbalanced with these forces. So if I include all of these forces of static equilibrium in my equation, they will cancel each other. So we don't need to include it. So I'm analyzing the, this problem from static equilibrium position and downward when the system starts moving. Now, let's have the equation, let's then define the equation of motion, which we know is sum of forces equal mass by acceleration and it's gonna be equal to minus Fs minus Fd. So now we can continue working with this and we can find that the spring force is equal to minus Kx, and X represents the distance that the spring moves downward for stretch, and then the damping force is represented by the damping coefficient and the velocity. Now, rearranging, rearranging this equation, we can define the equation of motion in the following way. Minus Km over x minus Cm over x dot, and continue working this equation, we can find that our equation of motion will be of this one, equals zero. This is a free vibrating system. There's no ex external forces acting on the system. Now, the first step is to find the damping ratio. And we can easily find the damping ratio from the equation of motion. If we compare this equation to the characteristic equation of a free vibrating system with damping. The characteristic equation of a free vibrating system with damping is of the following form. So if you can see, these two equations can be made equivalent and we can compare the coefficient of the velocity with the coefficient of the velocity in the characteristic equation. And that would give us the following equation. Two damping ratio Wn has to be equal to Cm. So we're basically making equal these two coefficients. So if we just rearrange this equation to find the damping ratio, it will be damping ratio is equal to C2M over WN. So for us to find the damping ratio, we need the natural frequency WN. So let's find the natural frequency now. We already have C, we have M because they're given in the problem. So we need to find natural frequency. 
Similarly, as we did before, we can compare the coefficient in the characteristic equation is Wn squared can be equal to the coefficient in our equation of motion, which is k over m. So Wn squared is equal to k over m. Therefore, the natural frequency is going to be the square root of k over m. This problem gives us the value of k and the value of m, and with that, we can find the natural frequency. When we plug these numbers here, we have 3,500 over 4.536, and that gives us a value of 27.78 radians per second. Now, we have the natural frequency, and we can now find the damping ratio. So the damping ratio is going to be the damping coefficient, 12.43, over 2 by the mass divided by the natural frequency. And that gives us the value of 0 0.0494. Now, that's part A of our problem. Now, let's, let's work with part B. In part B, we were asked to find the logarithmic decrement. So what does this mean? And we also know that this is equal to 2 pi damping ratio over the square root of 1 minus damping ratio squared, which at the same time is equal to the natural logarithm of x1 over x2, amplitude 1 over amplitude 2. What does this mean physically? So a system, with, if, when the system is vibrating, you can, you can make a chart of how the system is vibrating versus time. And if we can make that uh, graph for a system with damping, we're gonna have something like this. It's like a wave. Okay, something like this. And we're gonna have initial wave, and then we're gonna have something like this until it decays, right? So um, this amplitude from here to here is x1, this is x, and this will be wt. So this amplitude x, x1 and this amplitude is x2. Therefore, that is what it means that it's a decrement. So because we have damping in the system, the damping is going to cause the system to decay. Therefore, we can find these amplitudes by using this formula. Or you can, if you have actually this with the, the, the SAC uh, chart, you can find the amplitude simply by plugging the numbers on the chart x1 over x2. Okay, um, let's calculate now the logarithmic decrement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue up here, the problem. So we already uh, know that our logarithmic decrement equation is 2p by the damping ratio, which we find it was 0 0.0494 divided over the square root of 1 minus 0 0.0494 squared, and that gives us the value of 0 0.3101. That is the value of the logarithmic decrement as requested in part B of the problem. Now, part C asks us for the ratio of amplitude one over amplitude two. So we know that the ratio of amplitude one over amplitude two, 
as it was represented here in the graph, is, can be determined using the logarithmic decrement. We learned previously that the logarithmic decrement is equal to two pi damping ratio over the square root of one minus damping ratio squared, but it's also equal to the natural logarithmic logarithm of x1 over x2. So we can get, if we take the exponential of the logarithmic decrement equal to the exponential of the natural logarithm x1 over x2, we are gonna get exponential of logarithmic decrement equals x1 over x2. So the value of the exponential uh, number is simply 2.718 to the point 31.01 equals x1 over x2, and that is equal to 1.364. And that is part C of this problem. And remember, this ratio represents, here you see, we have applied the exponential to sort for x1 over x2, and the value is 1.364 and it's part C of the problem, and this ratio re represents the ratio of the amplitudes in the graph. For more content on how to solve vibrations and control problems, you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.